Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in our modern C++ series. So in this lesson, I want to go ahead and start off with a little bit of a quiz here and see what we think about this piece of code here. So let's go ahead and dive in. So in this piece of code here, I've got a little program here and we can see that we say the age is initialized to negative seven and we're doing a little bit of a check here with this if condition here to make sure that our age is some positive number. So if it's less than zero, uh, or maybe even if we wanted less than or equal to zero, maybe we're just going to report an error in this program. Now, unfortunately, this is the type of error checking that we might do if we're not familiar with some of the language's capabilities for handling errors. But this is already an interesting example that we have to think about. You know, these types of errors, for instance, if we're checking for this condition, well, why not just check for or make this type a unsigned integer so there's no possibility of this being a negative number. So those might be some types of things that we even want to think about. But I want to give you a little bit of a better tool here for thinking about uh, error handling here. And if there's something that just logically cannot be true, that is, there is some impossibility for something to happen. And for this, we have something known as an assert statement. So let me go ahead and take you to CPP reference here. I'm going to go ahead and search for assert and find assert here. Now, what you're going to find here is this is something that's part of a header file called C assert. And this isn't a keyword that's built into the language, but rather a macro that somebody has defined for us. In fact, this is sort of inherited behavior from the C programming language. So let's go ahead and just take a look at using assert here. We can go ahead and see that there are some examples here that are provided. But again, these are things that must be logically true. So for example, in your universe or whatever hardware you're working on, if two plus two does not equal four, that's unfortunately going to be a really big problem. So you want to assert and make sure that the program's best thing it can do is just terminate. So it's sort of like what we did in this little example here, where the best thing we could do is just say, hey, we want to return from our main function right away, or maybe exit or send out an error code or do something. So let's go ahead and start with this. So what I want to go ahead and do here is just in my program here, and it's a little bit cleaner here, is just assert that age is greater than zero. And again, just to sort of show or illustrate the point that this is not part of the language, if I try to compile this, uh, which I'll do here, we'll get a error message here. So again, we need to include the C assert uh, file here, include C assert. And again, anytime you see C in front of uh, one of the header files, that probably means it's an inherited behavior from the C programming language. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, and now I can go ahead and run this and you'll see we get this assertion here. Now what's really nice or I guess interesting for testing purposes is that we'll actually get where this assertion happened here. So again, this is another reason why we tend to like assertions. They'll actually tell you where did you crash in the program here. So this happens to be at our program in line eight. So in a way this serves as a good checkpoint again that we shouldn't proceed any further. The proper thing to do is to just crash in this program uh, as we reach this line. And then we could look at the core or do any sort of debugging with say GDB if we wanted uh, to find out more of what's happening. Now a little trick that we can do with our assertion statements to make them a little bit stronger is what you're going to see um, Sometimes, uh, I guess it's more common in C code, I don't see it in this uh, example here, but you can actually put a little custom message here by doing a little ampersand and writing out some message here. Age was less than zero. So I'm just going to go ahead and put that uh, little string there. I'm going to go ahead and compile this, run it, and then we'll go ahead and get the assertion. In a way, it's sort of a named assertion in this way that, well, this is what failed, and we have a little bit of an error message here, because this is just going to evaluate to uh, some true statement here. So this is just a little bit of a trick that you'll sometimes see in code bases. So this is one thing that if I can encourage you to do something in your code bases is to write lots of assertions. At the very least, they serve as a contract for things that just should not be true. So these are sort of the assumptions going into this main function. Or for example, let's go ahead and write uh, another function here. Uh, let's go ahead and just call it check age here, input age. And let's just go ahead and move this assertion up here and go ahead and we could have this uh, code here. So check our age for our age. And let's just go ahead and run this program here. I go ahead and recompile it here. Uh, oops, let me go ahead and make sure this is the input age for our parameter. There we are. 
And if we run it again, we'll get our assertion. So you might want to write these little sort of error checking functions, or this could be part of a larger function that you're actually calling and something that you want to evaluate ahead of time. Now in this sort of tiny example here, this might not be seen as useful. And again, you might say, well, Mike, maybe we should just have made this an unsigned type, but that can lead you to make different types of code changes or refactorings that are a good thing. And then you can still keep those assertions there and maybe check that they're, um, you know, change the parameter here. Age isn't greater than 150 or something, you know, relatively reasonable. Now, that's not where I want to stop though with assertions because we found out that they're this pretty helpful tool that we have for catching errors. But again, these errors were caught at runtime we had to actually run our program and then crash it essentially to find this error which might not be ideal especially if you're in some real-time system that needs to be running you know 99.999 percent or more of the time here so as we've moved into modern c we have something even more powerful so i'm going to go ahead back to the cpp reference page and if you go towards the bottom here you'll notice that there's something called static assert now this is part of the language here on something that you get here and this performs compile time assertion checking so we've learned about a few different compile time things if you haven't seen the previous uh lesson in the playlist on const expert you can go ahead and check that out but that's essentially where this uh takes place and you'll notice that static uh, assert is looking at something that is const expert, some Boolean expression that it can evaluate at compile time and tell you true or false. So let's go ahead and take a look at a few examples here of how to use this static assert feature here. And there are a few examples uh, provided here, um, which I'll show in a moment, but let's just go ahead and see uh, if we can change this function um, in some way here. Uh, and, and let's go ahead and just make it really simple now. So let me go ahead and just comment this out. And let's just go ahead and use static assert here, age greater than zero. And we can provide a little bit of a message here, uh, message. So I'll just go ahead and leave this code as is here. Now let's go ahead and just try to compile this and see what happens here. And I'll go ahead and compile it. Well, I'm going to get an error here. And you're probably going to get an error here again with static assert of non-constant condition, right? So this has to be some sort of constant value here. So again, let's either make it, uh, let's make it const expert here. Because again, static assert, you can think of a static as happening during compile time or being evaluated during compile time. So let's go ahead and now compile it. And now we are getting an error message, but was it something that I did? Well, in this case, <laughs> the, the actual syntax of the code is correct, but this assertion is failing here. So we actually get it as an error message and we can't even run our program, which again could be very important for safety critical systems that we don't even want to run if this is not true in our universe. So let's go ahead and modify this. Let's go ahead and just make this a positive number and go ahead and rerun this, and now our code is going to compile. So there's all sorts of cool things you can do with these sort of static asserts that are generally useful. A common use case that you'll often see for these static asserts, for example, is if you're checking your architecture, for instance, int is you know, four bytes here. So size of int equals four, something like this. This is where I've very commonly seen it, and you'll have different examples. Uh, for example, if you're just compiling some software for a particular architecture, you would want to know these types of things that your compiler uh, can do for you. But if you also had functions, for instance, that were const expert, so let's go ahead and do const uh, expert, uh, maybe a uh, add function. And this is something similar to what I did in the uh, const expert uh, video here. And let's just go ahead and return a plus b here we could also write different uh, assertions for our function here so let's just go ahead and do a static assert here for our const expert function add two and two let's also make sure that is four two plus two equals four and we'll go ahead and uh, run this here uh, oops now i need to uh, pass in the type here that's an integer and we'll see that that evaluates. And let's go ahead and make it uh, false here. Let's say if 2 plus 2 uh, is 5. And typically in the little message here, we would say, you know, maybe what is wrong here. 2 plus 2 is not equal to 4 or 5 or whatever condition we're checking. Uh, and then again, we can see the error here that is taking place here.
So let's go ahead and just leave this in a correct form so that you can see all the code uh, working at this time here. Uh, and again, static asserts are really a powerful feature and it can kind of show you where the language is moving um, as far as being able to do more things at compile time. So with that said, folks, I hope you learned about assertions. If you didn't already know about them, they're a great way to uh, add some error checking in your code at runtime documentation or a sort of contract of what your expectation was. And if you can get away with it, and especially if you're starting to use things like const expert, if you can evaluate things at compile time, it's often much easier if you can catch these bugs at compile time versus waiting for your program to run and then have to go in an investigation um, you know, versus if your program crashes and trying to figure out what happened. All right, folks, so I hope that was useful for you. I hope that's one more tool you can add to your tool belt of writing some better C++ code. If you found this interesting, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss other videos. And comment below if you have other situations or bugs you've run into where assert, for example, has really helped you out. With that said, I'll see you next time, folks.